Hey everyone, it's Trevor Turnbull here from Sports Networker and I'm joined by Jamie Stein. Jamie is the Director of Digital Marketing for the CFL, is that right? Uh, manager of Digital Media. Manager of Digital <laughs> Media, there you go. Uh, wears many hats though, he's doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I wanted to meet up with Jamie because Jamie's been doing some really cool stuff with the CFL over the last couple of years in this role. And Jamie, maybe tell everyone uh, exactly what you do on a daily basis. What does it all entail? Yeah, so uh, a day-to-day -day basis for us would uh, start with checking out the website. So we're in charge of all the content on the website in our uh, little team. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then from there, we've got Facebook, and we've got Twitter, and we've got YouTube. So for us, uh, a Monday morning we meet, we have a story meeting, we have a big whiteboard up that, that lays out the week and, and splits our content by... Um, by genre, so we've got what goes up as written text on the website, and then from there, it's sort of a, a place you go with Twitter. We um, we respond to fans. We also tweet out our content. So there's a two-way dialogue, and that yeah. that's sort of you don't know what's going to happen each day. You sort of you take each day as it comes, yeah, and that yeah, you know yeah. that's what's fun about that. Facebook, it's sort of set what's going to go up. We have a content schedule every three to four hours, new content. And then same with YouTube, we put up we put up different video every uh, three to four hours on a content schedule. Right. So you have a team of people that work with you then, or how many people work yeah. with that digital team? So we have we have two video editors or video producers, and then um, we have three people, including myself, that are sort of um, multi-purpose content people in social media. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. How does one get into a role like this? <laughs> obviously, you know, the whole, especially on the social media side of things, obviously, you know, online and websites and stuff have been around for a while, but um, as well as roles that relate directly to them, but the social media element is kind of a new thing. Um, how did you, you know, work your way up to evolve into this role as it exists today? Yeah. So, so the content role was, was a basis of my background in journalism. So I had always been involved in, um, in content development and then as a radio broadcaster and then, and then eventually as my role at the CFL. The, the social media is the interesting part and that's sort of where it's become my area of expertise and that was a role I created. We didn't have social media, it wasn't on anybody's title and um, we, we developed Twitter feed, we developed a Facebook page, and from there that was something I championed and ran with, and uh, now it's sort of a part of our day-to-day -day lives, and it, it's become the central point of, of a lot of different departments. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, you started out uh, where probably Facebook and Twitter weren't even taken seriously <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to a certain degree, right? Yeah. And now it's kind of evolved into one of the main communication points um, from a fan engagement perspective, yeah. for sure. Uh, what are some unique ways that you guys have been using social media with the league uh, to connect with those fans um, and then integrate sponsors? I guess that's the second part of the question, but just from a fan engagement, what's some of the cool stuff you guys are doing? Yeah, so one of my favorite ones on Twitter, and, and for me, it's funny because like, the more simple, the better I find often. And uh, we had, uh, at Halloween last year, we had uh, a fan make a pumpkin with a CFL logo in it and tweeted and said, hey, check out our pumpkin, this is really cool. And I thought, yeah, that is cool. Look at this CFL pumpkin. That takes a lot of work. So we took the pumpkin and we changed our profile picture for the Halloween weekend to this fan CFL pumpkin, which then prompted the fan to say, hey, that's my pumpkin. And then other people started saying, well, I made a CFL pumpkin too. And then people started tweeting us their pumpkins with their team logos or CFL logo. Next thing you know, there were these, these pumpkins flying all over the place. Nice. So, you know, they talk about social media being two-way. That was created by fans. We didn't create that. So that, that came to us. Um, a more modern example, or, uh, or more recent, I should say, is, is Keek, uh, K -E -E -K com, and it's little micro video blogging, and what we're doing with that is um, we're, we're, we're on location with players, and what we'll do is we'll tweet to our fans and, and ask them to send in questions for players. Then what we'll do is we'll, we'll take our iPhones and we'll, and we'll simply just shoot the video with a player responding to the fan's question and then we can upload that instantly back to Twitter with a personalized response for a fan. So, wow. so you know, a lot of people say a retweet or a follow back is the new autograph in this era. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're taking that even further by saying here's a personalized message that now lives permanently on the web and then you can show all your friends, hey look, my favorite player just responded to my question. Nice, yeah. I know I've seen that with uh, some big corporate brands even too. Best Buy does yeah. that. I think their president um, will respond to uh, support requests and customer yeah. service questions and that type of thing um, from the purpose of just giving that personal connection, that personal yeah. touch, right? Because um, the fans really, the CFL is unique that way and that the 
the fans really do have uh, an unprecedented access to the players more so than any other league I think so you guys really have an asset there in the sense that the players are so engaging and they want to use these tools right um, so speaking to that uh, uh, I wasn't actually gonna ask this question but we, it, it's come up now um, do you have you guys devised any kind of policy as it relates to social media for the teams and the players in how they go about using these tools? Like, do you have any rules and guidelines that yeah. you guys have outlined? So, so we established a, a policy for the players that, that limits the time before and after a game in which they can go on social media. I believe it's 20 minutes on either side of a game. So it's not very restrictive. And then the only other caveat to that is any comments made on social media are treated the same as any comments made to traditional media. So if you were to, to, to you know, swear or... or tear down the league in a tweet, it would be the same as if you were to say it on the national news. So, right, right. so in the end of the day, it's really common sense prevails. You want to, you know, watch what you say or think before you tweet. But, but, you know, I'm proud to say that the players in the CFL are some of the most engaging athletes you'll meet out there. And, and they're very open and they talk to fans. And, and that's without really any prompting from the league or from the teams. A lot of it happened organically with the players. And, um, you know, a lot of them use it for their own charity causes as well, which, which I think is neat, um, especially you're seeing right now with the, with the CFL Pink campaign for women's cancer awareness this month. Yeah. A lot of players like Taylor Robertson, Randy Chevrier, pushing you know, their personal stories out to fans and really engaging and making it a connection that people can relate to. Right, yeah, the authenticity, I yeah. think, is really important, especially from the athlete perspective, right? It yeah. uh, allows people to connect with them on a real level as opposed to them being this, you know, larger-than-life athlete that uh, also happens to be just an average person, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really powerful thing. Um, from a sponsorship advertising perspective, have you guys been able to integrate uh, any of your sponsors into these online components, uh, social media as well as the website? Um, not probably on a mass scale and what the audience would like to see is how does social media make me money but one of my favorite examples is at our Grey Cup tweet up last year and TELUS is one of our partners and TELUS was involved with us in the tweet up um, we work together on a mobile app with them the TELUS CFL mobile app and, yeah. and what we do with that app is and this was a neat little activation is if you came to our tweet up and you came over to the TELUS table and said hey, I've downloaded this app, and you showed it to them, you were given you know, a TELUS toque and, and, and some beads with some, some uh, lip chap, chapstick on it because it was Edmonton, it was cold. So yeah, it was neat. You know, there, was a little, there was a little reward for showing that you were, you were you know, engaging with this app that was a co-branded product. So that's, you know, did that lead directly to monetization? No, but did it lead to an engagement with, with a brand that partners with the CFL? Yes, and I think that was a good way to do it because it was relevant to our fans because the app helps them but it also benefited you know our, our corporate partner mm -hmm. and uh, that's a great example I know the CFL is is um, trying to lead in many ways uh, with regards to integrating social media and stuff uh, is there other leagues though that you look to as best practice and in, in mm -hmm. kind of following and seeing what they're doing and um, trying to emulate maybe some of those best practice examples yeah I, I think we're really lucky in North America in that all of the major pro sports leagues seem to be doing different things in social media, but everybody's experimenting. And, and to, yeah. me, to me, that's the key is t if you want to learn in social media, you can try and reinvent the wheel, but, but I think it's just run little experiments like the Keek one I talked about. That's just an experiment we're running on the side, and, and the Keek video may at the end of the year be something we, we go, yeah, that didn't work, you know, it was neat, but it didn't work, or we may go, that's huge, let's invest in it further. And, and if you look at what the major pro sports leagues are doing, they're running little experiments because sometimes what you think may work may absolutely not work, and, and sometimes what you don't think works, works, and, and then you can be surprised. So I, I would say if you're interested in figuring out what works, look at what other people are doing, look at the experiments they're running, and experiment on your own as well. Right. Um, how are you guys measuring the success too? Like, are, are you trying to uh, equate all of this this social activity to some type of a, a measurable result, whether it be sales or awareness or lead generation or anything like that? Have you guys taken any steps in that direction? We've we've taken little steps working through Ticketmaster. We can put uh, came from codes 
on the URLs that we send out. Um, we've integrated that on our website this year, so we're now able to see how much revenue comes off the website. And now the next extension of that is then having specific codes they get tweeted out or Facebooked out and then seeing what revenue then would come in from Twitter or Facebook. So for us, it'd be mostly in tickets and then eventually we'd like to also integrate that with shop as well and, and our online store. Right. Well, it's obviously constantly evolving. It's awesome to see you guys doing the stuff that you're doing. I'm excited to see uh, what happens over the next couple of years here. It's, it's the wild, wild west as they say, <laughs> right? There's so many things changing constantly. Um, so uh, speaking from the perspective of your role as the manager of, of digital and social media for the CFL, um, I know a lot of people that, uh, that follow Sports Networker and the Sports Executives Association um, are people that are s aspiring to kind of get to where you are right now um, and beyond. You know, they want to run pro sports teams and they want to be VP level uh, selling tickets or, or doing sponsorship or whatever it might be. Uh, if you had one bit of advice to give, um, based on your own past experience, what would that be for those aspiring sports business professionals? If, if you want to be in the sports industry, you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes. And, and I think if I look back at the people that are successful, they're the people that are in the office before you every day, and they're the people that are in the office after you leave. They're also the first person to put their hand up when someone else needs help, and they're just generally around when people need somebody. And I find that most times the people that get hired in the sports industry, the sports industry doesn't hire looking at growth. They usually hire once they've already hit a point where they desperately need somebody and hiring's hard. So they usually look for who's nearby. Yeah. So if you're that person that's been hard working, chances are they're gonna go, I don't wanna do a job search, but hey, he's right here and he's, he's been doing that job already. You're in and here you go. Yeah. So be that person, be that guy or girl who's always there and people will get to know who you are and I think they'll just be ready to tap you on the shoulder when the time comes. Nice. Can't substitute hard work. <laughs> Great message. Um, so last thing, how do people connect with you as well as the CFL online? So you can visit us. Our website is www.cfl.ca. Uh, on Twitter, we're at CFL. And on Facebook, we're facebook.com slash CFL. And uh, personally, you can reach me uh, on uh, Twitter, jamiestein.com, uh, Jamie spelled J-A-I-M-E. There you go. And uh, yeah, you can check me out on LinkedIn as well. Uh, flip me a note and I'm happy to connect with anyone and I love talking social. So Awesome. So do I, man. I really hey, appreciate you doing this me. interview. And I'll make sure to link that all up below this video so that you guys can connect with Jamie. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon.